audio? No audio, no. No, I'll, um, uh, I've collected the data of uh, the separate surgical teams and I try to compile and provide a comprehensive picture. But first, thanking the organizers for showing us this uh, wonderful uh, place on Earth. Um, so what was the initial question? I think the first one to phrase the question was, in fact, Santiago, who was interested in um, how does the next generation who learned the tips and tricks in Montpellier, um, uh, what does the care look like? So is non-enhancing glioma uh, of the insula resected different at the beginning of the learning curve? So there's Emmanuel Mandonet from Paris, Santiago from Madrid and Bilbao, Juan Martino from Santander, uh, myself and Ug as a reference. And what we try to do is to sum up the uh, oncological outcome. The data was too premature for survival outcomes, so we stuck to volumetric analysis and the resection probability maps. And then second, to compare as far as possible the neurological outcome, the neuropsychological outcome, and the work status of these patients. So this is what the data looks like. And it's um, important to look at these inclusion years. So um, from the, um, the four juniors, it's in fact from the beginning of their first insular glioma case. And for uh, Dr. Dufault, it's from 2007 to 2012. And these are the, the numbers of patients, and they're very comparable um, regarding age, uh, gender, and there is some different application of pathological criteria, as we already heard, especially in um, Montpellier. Um, looking at preoperative tumor volume, so here you see histograms on the right side of the individual neurosurgeons with the median volume of glioma. Um, not very different, if you look at the picture. Combining the juniors, comparing it with the senior, um, it is, again, very similar. Um, we can look at tumor load maps. So you see um, that in some particular voxel, the overlap is a maximum of 46 patients. Um, so what you see here is basically the natural distribution of um, low-grade gliomas of the injula in these particular patients. Um, what you can note is that the extensions are quite considerable. There's a lot of purple of individual cases with uh, large extensions. And this is if you look at these um, five teams in comparison. So it, it doesn't tell that much because the numbers are very low. Uh, but from a uh, zoomed out picture, it doesn't look very different. Uh, we can even test this. So there's the compiled set of the junior teams. Here's the compiled set of Dr. Dufault. Here's where you can see the relative differences. More blue means a slightly more occurrence in the junior uh, compilation versus the seniors. This is if you apply a very blunt p-value test to all these voxels. And this is what remains after correcting for the, um, uh, the massive amount of voxels that is being tested. So this tells us that there is no difference in location of these tumors, unsurprisingly. Well, regarding the oncological outcome, first I'll show the, um, uh, the volumetric outcome. So this is the residual volume after surgery, uh, usually measured on the MRI scans, not made immediately after surgery, but say somewhere between three and six months after surgery. And what we see here is that, um, again, for the individuals, there are some exceptions, but in large, the... Um, uh, the volumes don't differ that much, if you look at it this way. If you compile the juniors in, compared to Dr. Dufault's series, it's again not dissimilar in terms of volume of residue. If we look at the extent of resection, very much related measurement on the MRs, um, again you see there's some jumpiness due to the, the low number of cases, Per, um, per surgical team. If we compile the, um, the juniors and compare it to Dr. Dufault's series, it's similar in landscape. Well, then we built these resection probability maps, and um, what it basically shows is per voxel information on the number of patients in which 
an infiltrated part of the brain had been removed. So green means um, in any patient with a tumor location over there, the tumor was resected. In red, um, none of the patients had a, a tumor resected over there. And again, this shows some jumpy outcome because of the low uh, numbers of patients. This doesn't tell that much because of that. If we then compile that data again and split this into the left-sided tumors and the right-sided tumors, um, we see the following. On the left side of the brain, we start to see some locations where um, tumor was in fact differentially resected. Um, for instance, if we look all the way posterior in the insula, we see that in this case the junior um, um, had more extensive resections at that location than the compilation of juniors. And then there's another region, um, the anterior cingulate, over here that is also statistically significantly differentially resected. Again, more extensive resections um, in the senior series compared to the junior series. And then if we look at the right hemisphere, again, we see some regions that are differentially resected. And then all of a sudden, this seems to be opposite. So the anterior cingulate on the right side seems to be resected more frequently by the compilation of juniors than by the senior. And there's another region Over here, you see some significantly different voxels. And again, this seems to be resected more extensively by juniors than by the senior somehow. So this, this is not a judgment of whether more extensive resections at that location are better or worse. This is just to pinpoint the discussions that these juniors should have with their senior to proceed the field. Um, the more interesting is that um, the, the maps really look very similar, the resection maps. So if we compile all this data, we can zoom in to the regions that we tend to leave behind. So what we see here, um, again, the same uh, color legend is the, um, uh, the anterior perforating substance that is typically avoided in the whole series. And then what we also see is that on the posterior part of the insula, um, there's a region where usually tumor is left behind. Then on the superior side of the insula that Dr. Bello uh, just mentioned as well, we see that there uh, is again a region prone for residual tumor. And then there's two other regions that at least I was not aware of that we tend to leave residue behind, uh, which is the anterior cingulate. And Apparently, we have difficulty in removing the dorsal uh, parts of the mesiotemporal uh, lobe and uh, performing hippocampectomies. So far was the oncological outcome. Now for the functional outcome. Um, so this is neurological outcome. Scored is either early deficits or late deficits. Early, we specifically looked at deficits within the first month. And late, we tried to obtain the retrospective results of late outcome at six months. And we separated this into any deficit and severe deficits. And what's pretty striking is that there are um, one third of patients seem to have a very severe deficits early after surgery. And in the end, severe deficits, there's only one patient in this series. Any deficit, which is typically either monoparesis or uh, a, senso, um, a sensory syndrome. Um, 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 well, you see that nearly half of the patient has any type of deficit that may hold them somewhat longer in the hospital. And at late, late outcome, there's still quite a number of patients who report uh, neurological deficits, although not that severe, um, at late outcome. Um, return to work, not all of these patients were working at the time of diagnosis. So here you see the numbers of the patients who actually had a profession uh, during diagnosis. And what we see um, considering their return to work status, again late, at approximately nine months, we see that nearly 80% of these patients actually return to work, whereas one out of five apparently does not. 
cognitive outcome. So um, we all promised to do a full and extensive neuropsychological examinations, both pre- and post-operatively, and this was only obtained for at least this, um, uh, this analysis of 28 patients. So it doesn't tell that much, but it tells something. Um, here you can see the different domains, attention, information processing speed, working memory, executive functioning, and uh, visual construction. And here you see the individual tests, what this is built of. And here you see the differential scores between the normalized scores after surgery minus the one before surgery. So the, the patients who may suffer from a cognitive deficit are identified on the far right side of these plots. Each patient is represented by a bar and the, the color code um, indicates the, uh, the surgical team. Some patients improve as we heard earlier today, and um, some patients indeed decline in specific tests or specific domains. Um, there's quite some literature out there on the topic of resections of uh, insular gliomas, and um, it is not that easy to compare the oncological outcome due to the different definitions that were being used. Um, I think one of the, the values that is coming close to being comparable between these series is perhaps the median extent of resection, um, with all of its downsides, obviously. The, the bottom row shows where the, uh, the current series um, um, holds. Um, then we see that the uh, late severe neurological deficits that were identified in these series vary quite considerably. Um, in the later series, this seems to be lower than before, and the return to work has hardly been reported, where this seems to be a rather reproducible uh, measure. Strengths of this analysis, multiple teams. We attempted to do neuropsychological examinations. It was relatively well documented. We used modern oncological outcome measurements to look at the, the details of the differences in resection. But obviously, we have incomplete functional outcome. We have not standardized imaging protocols to uh, look at these residues. All these teams um, obviously used a similar approach, approach that we learned by uh, visiting Dr. Tufo in Montpellier, obviously. It may be interesting to expand this with teams with completely different visions uh, who hardly use mapping, for instance. Um, very short follow-up, and uh, neuropsychological examinations were definitely not standardized. So in conclusion, the oncological outcome at the beginning of the learning curve is not that different if you apply the rules, perhaps. Juniors seem to have slightly more extensive resections in the right hemisphere, and the seniors has slightly more extensive resections in the left hemisphere. Some regions are typically prone for residual tumor, and uh, considering the functional outcome, many patients start with a severe deficit. Some patients end with a minor permanent deficit, one out of five. A few patients have severe neurological deficits um, permanently. Many patients seem to return to work within a year, 80% of them, and the cognitive outcome remains unanswered by this uh, data. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very, very interesting. Eh? I